Gregor Gillespie, guys, are you familiar with Gregor? I'm going to talk to you as though you're not. I'm going to talk to you as though you don't know that this guy's only lost one fight. At one point, this guy was undefeated 11-0. I'm not going to mention that he fought at Madison Square Garden and he was on a trajectory for a championship run. I'm just going to start at the beginning because he's a college wrestler and he was awesome. He was so tenacious. I don't get to use that word very often. But he was so tenacious and he would put so much pressure on guys. And he would attack, and he'd wear you down, he'd make you quit. He would do everything that the greats of collegiate wrestling had to do. He becomes champion, decides he's going to go into MMA. For years, and literally plural, maybe up to three, when I would have private conversations with you guys, we run into each other somewhere, you start asking me, people would ask me all the time, is there anyone that can beat Khabib? Who's the guy that can stop Khabib? And in private conversations, I would say, we actually have a guy now. He's 11 and 0. He's a national wrestling champion. Nobody's ever come close to taking him down. He's taken absolutely everybody down. Oh, and by the way, he can hold up. Most guys that are fighting Khabib simply don't have the lungs and the endurance. Khabib weaponized pace like nobody else, but that's very hard to see. Sports announcers don't talk about he got him tired. He did more. They don't talk about that. Athletes see it and they respect it. And one thing that Khabib could do is he could just push a pace that was much higher than what the opponent could, could, could push back. So I did insert Gregor in this. Gregor also made his living, his undefeated at the point of these conversations, NCAA champion at the point of these conversations. He made his living getting people tired. I said, I said, Gregor, that's how good he is. And that's how highly I personally think of him. Now, in all fairness, I did not do that publicly. But the reason I didn't do it publicly is you didn't know what a Gregor Gillespie was. You just did it. So I would save that kind of ammunition for when I was one-on-one, -on -one, when we were just visiting. Hey, make sure you keep your eye on one of these types of things. So that would make me a Gregor supporter. Can we agree? Particularly the way you talk about a guy behind his back shows where that guy stands. Now, I did do a public thing on Gregor. Gregor came out. Gregor, who would not say boo if he had a mouthful of it, came out. He was talked into doing a promo. And the promo had to do with him sitting down at the breakfast table and pouring himself a box of Wheaties. Now the Wheaties box was empty. The milk was on the table, but there was no milk in the bowl. There was a lot of things wrong with this. And he used the food as a prop. He said something. He took a bite. He comes back to the camera and finishes the thought, which means it was scripted. And I'm okay with all of those things. I would never fault a guy for any of those things. Where I had a problem with it is once you botched the spot and it's your camera, edit the thing, or cut and redo it. So I gave him a bump. I had to tease him for that piece. Now, I meant that in the spirit of fail hello well met from one wrestler to another, but Gregor got asked about it. And Gregor said, man, that actually hurt my feelings. He said, but me and that guy, we've never met, talking about me, he said, me and that guy, we've never met, but he's a wrestler, I'm a wrestler. And I, I was a little surprised that he came at me that way. And that kind of won me over. I see Gregor's point. I believe in the fraternity. That's one wrestler to another. Now, Gregor didn't understand that from my perspective, I had never spoken about him again, and I've got the world's biggest audience, in all fairness. I had never spoken about him because he hadn't done anything that I could speak about. Privately, I was building him up. So the one time I do come out publicly, I give him a hard time. It was still meant as a way of serving and bringing Gregor's name to you guys. He didn't see it that way, and I laid out. Because that does mean something, what he said. We were both wrestlers. I should be... I see what he's saying there, and I stopped. But Gregor's now come out today, and it turns out the UFC was interested in making a Gregor Gillespie, Tony Ferguson match. Tony was not interested in Gregor. Now, say what you want about Tony Ferguson. The man is a legend of the sport. He has fought absolutely everybody, and he has even passed the shine to a couple of guys. He's the one that shined up. Darush, who will be going right into the biggest match of his career. He's the one, Tony Ferguson, that shined up Charles Oliveira, who went right into a world title match. So Tony got up in the loft and he left the ladder down behind him. He's let plenty of guys come up, but he's now seen a guy in Gregor who is not a household name. Doesn't take away from Gregor's skills. Tony probably sees something good within the skills, but he's looking for a different kind of a matchup. Tony himself was calling for Michael Chandler. I will not submit for you that Chandler is an easier or harder fight than Gillespie. If you're not familiar with Gillespie, 
Think of Chandler. They're actually very, very comparable. But Tony wanted the bigger of the two names, and we understand that. And when the fight did not come through, that's where Gregor went to the media and he was pissed off. Now, I only know about Gregor what I hear about Gregor. But I have heard this about Gregor for three years now, that he will not take fights. The reason you see huge gaps in between Gregor's last fight and his next fight isn't because he's not getting called. It's not because he's got a, a bum shoulder or knee or ankle. He gets offered the fight and says no. He's even been threatened in some regards, such as, I can't bump your money if you don't take harder fights. Great, don't bump my money. I can't prove any of these things are true, guys. I'm only confirming for you, I have heard this, I have heard this, and I've heard this from other people. Okay, great, Gregor, we can't put you in the placement of the card. We'd like to use you if you're fighting these kinds of guys. Great, don't put me in that place in the card. Okay, we can't move you up the rankings. Okay, great, don't move me up the rankings. This is what I've been told, told, and retold, and I believe it to be true, that Gregor isn't taking fights. Now, the one time that Gregor wants a fight and can't get it, he's upset. Do you see the problem? Now, my entire diatribe goes out the window if I've been ba given bad information and Gregor is accepting fights. But I'm going to have to push back on that and say, why from the time you fought Kevin Lee to your last fight, was it a year or more? And why was your last fight in May? And we're almost to May of this year. Are you the one guy under contract who isn't owed contractually three fights? No, of course you are. You're owed three fights. They offered you fights. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And you're turning down fights. So now all of a sudden you're chomping at the bit because you're seeing Tony Ferguson, who everybody knows who he is, and you're even maybe seeing a blueprint within your skills that looks good for Tony Ferguson. I mean, do you see the problem? This isn't to give Gregor a hard time, guys. I swear to you, whether you want to believe it or not, when I gave him a bump on that Wheaties box, it was not to give him a hard time. It was to get his name out there. I am not teasing him right now for wanting a fight that he didn't get. I like that. However, however, Gregor is getting very bad advice. The guy that told him to sit down to an empty Wheaties box and not put any milk in, into the bowl, told him to take a bite in between. They went and looked at it, thought it was good, and uploaded it. Somebody's giving him very bad advice. Let me give him some good advice for a change. Gregor Gillespie's as good as I'm telling you he is. If he has something up here where he doesn't want to compete, that would stun me. Only because for four years, known as his freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, he went into the NCAA tournament for absolutely no money. He made weight 32 times, and he took on 37 guys. Anyone they wanted to put out there. So I know that mentality is with him somewhere. I also know there's huge gaps, and there's a problem with building this guy into a household name. If he's not going to fight the bombs, what makes you think he's going to fight the champions, right? This is the problem. Perception being reality, this is the problem. If Gregor Gillespie would like a leg up, you do not waste your time going after Tony Ferguson. Tony's got other things to do, and he's made it clear to your answer. Tony, as a matter of fact, has already inserted Michael Chandler. So if you're upset that you can't get Tony Ferguson, and that's going to be fair game, why is it not fair game that Tony can't be upset that he's not getting Michael Chandler? I mean, right, do you see where the problem is here? If you want to get a leg up, it is so glaringly obvious what the number one contender's match at 155 pounds is right now. We've known it, and we've known it for 10 weeks. Benny Darush versus Mas Islam Makhlchev. That is the number one contender's back. And guess who's called out, Islam or Benny? Guess. Guess. You got 52 guys under contract at 155 pounds. Of all 52 guys, guess who has called the winner for that fight? Nobody. Not one person. So guess who is most likely to get the winner of that fight, which has not been named number one contenders match. So don't tell me, oh, he's going to defer and draw right up into the champion. Don't, don't tell me that stuff. Who's going to get the fight is whoever spends the most energy building attention to that fight. That's the same guy that gets every single fight that you ever see on television. The guy who wanted it the most. The guy who called for it more often. If you want a leg up, and this was part of Gregor's story, he said, I want a path to the championship. Now, what in the hell that had to do with the call out that he just did, I will never know, but I will take him at his word if he wants a path for the championship. And I'll tell you what, Gregor matches up. You guys aren't going to like this. Gregor Gillespie matches up very well with Islam Makhlchev and with Benny Darush. He's that good. Physically, he is that good and that accomplished. I don't know what's going on up here. So something is not lining up. Something from his intercollegiate days into his professional career is not the same. 
In intercollegiate athletics, in four years, he did 112 matches. In professional fighting, in seven years, he's done 12 matches. So something's not lining up. But I do like the guy. And I can live with the fact that the cereal box was empty. I don't love that he's going after a legend of the sport and acting surprised when he only wants to go to work one day a year. And whoever's advising him, I'll give you a real clear path to the championship, stud. It goes to the winner of Makhlchev and Darush. And the line is nil. So go stand in it.